I think the Aliens Act is interesting because it embodies a lot of the aspects of deportation that developed afterwards, but it embodies it in a way that shows that there were always these tensions from the very beginning. So it comes up at a time when the country is very divided between two strong political parties, one party associated with John Adams and the Massachusetts and New England group, the Federalists they were known as, and the other with Jefferson and Madison who became known as the Democratic Republicans. It was a very strong divide and there was a lot of fear on the part of the Federalists who were in control of the government at that time about particularly the French and a lot of French aliens. They were concerned about influences that were coming into this country through the French Revolution. So there was a very uh, great sense of nervousness about French influence and it turned into a fear of foreigners. Uh, and that then turned into two or three laws that collectively are known as the Alien and Sedition Acts. The aliens part of it had two pieces. One was the Alien Enemies Act and the other was the Alien Friends Act. And uh, the Alien Enemies Act was not very controversial. It essentially said if we are at war then a native of that country is an alien enemy and that person can be dealt with, essentially deported. The Aliens Friends Act was much more controversial and that essentially gave the president the power unilaterally on his own to determine that a particular alien was a danger to the United States and to order that person deported. So that raised a lot of questions about the power of the president and the role of courts and the rule of law and the meaning of how much protection aliens would have in the United States as compared to citizens. And it was enforced pretty vigorously in some ways by some agents of the John Adams administration, in particular a man named Timothy Pickering who was a very strong federalist and a real enforcer. He even said once to John Adams, here are three blank warrants. You just sign them in blank and I'll fill in the names of who we're going to get deported. So it got to be a real power struggle between the executive branch and uh, other people in the country. Jefferson and Madison and others opposed this on a lot of different grounds, but what I find most interesting is a lot of their discourse about how Jefferson, for example, said the friendless alien has been selected as the subject of a social experiment, but the citizen will soon follow. So that was one kind of argument that we can't allow the government to have this kind of discretionary power just to get, let the president or the executive branch pick and choose uh, because if we let the government do it to them, quote unquote, then pretty soon the government will do it to us. That's one kind of argument. Madison had a whole different set of arguments which was about rule of law generally. He said it doesn't matter if it's them or us. It matters that the Constitution can't allow absolute power to be placed in the hands of a president even over aliens because if we accept that idea then we could just kill them you know so that can't be right so he said there always has to be protections of the rule of law there always has to be fair process you can't just allow the president to say you I don't like you're out you I like you can stay it can't be like that it has to be a law uh, a rule of law um, endeavor no matter how we do it